this is Nick from Forte Legato Coffee uh, here with our Legato Lounge. And uh, what I, who I have with me today is Baba Tunde Akinbaboye. Uh, and he is an amazing, amazing musician. And we're really, really excited to be able to just have a quick chat with him and, and learn a little bit about him. So uh, Tunde, um, tell us a little bit about yourself before we launch into, uh, you know, what kind of made you famous? Uh, well, um, I live in Southern California. I'm a professional opera singer. That's what I do for a living when there's not a pandemic. And I, but I've always had a deep love for it. And so it wasn't until a few years ago and I found that they, they kind of work together. So that, but yeah, that's, that's an opera, a hip hop loving opera singer. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm sure everybody's going to be really excited to uh, to meet you. So, um, tell us a little bit about uh, you know your your feelings on on music, especially how how opera and hip hop would mesh together um, in your head, and then how you actually showcase that first. I see. Well, one of the things I've always liked about hip hop or or opera is that you know through opera history it's always been pretty malleable it's always adjusted for the time periods there's always been different shifts through opera and i always love that how long it stayed around uh, while adapting and i felt a similar relationship with hip-hop uh hip-hop started you know in new york and it, as it moves through different regions through the decades in an effort to stay popular it's been a little evolving on its own as i'm sure a lot of musical styles have but one thing that um, is true for both is they've always kind of absorbed the popular music around themselves. And and, and I feel like that has never been, really been explored with, with the two of them. And so in my studies of being an opera singer, I would hear the relationships between hip hop. And honestly, as a big hip hop fan, before I got into opera, it made opera a lot easier to like take in. Uh, or to, to process, I could process it through like a hip hop lens. And so um, through my opera career, my professional opera career was kind of my dirty little secret that I would like use hip hop to, to like fine tune my opera. And, uh, and a few years ago, or a couple, yeah, I think it was like a few years ago, actually, honestly, for even longer before that, I've been doing that out loud. So I would be singing you know, I'm almost always listening to hip hop in my car, but I would be singing hip hop uh, opera songs because, you know, I'm either coming out of rehearsal or I'm working on learning another role. And so I would have the song stuck in my head, but be listening to hip hop and just sing it over the hip hop beat. And it was, and they fit pretty easily uh, often. And so, uh, but I always did it, you know, I never did it in front of anyone. It was just on my own. And then one day I was in my car and um, I, I had, the song Largo Alfa Totum from the Barbo Seville stuck in my head and it's probably one of the more famous baritone opera songs uh, and I was listening to Humble by Kendrick Lamar and I was still singing it over and I just realized how much so much of it lined up just the the structure of the song and so I started singing it some more and I was like oh you know what I've got to record this so I put up my phone and recorded me like just like we're singing through it you know my friends to like it and that they they were really excited they were sharing it and then they shared it to their friends their, and their friends and soon it spread way far out of my network and then it picked up speed and I was I, I was a little surprised that night because I posted it you know right before going to bed but I was like okay I guess they really like it and I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I you know I had emails from everyone and like Time Magazine and uh, a few other places like I got a uh, phone call from Ellen, uh, America's Got Talent, and it was all over the place. And then my inbox was just full, and I realized that people, like, yeah, they thought it was cool and it was interesting, but I realized that there's kind of like almost like a, a void, like, people really want this kind of music. And so 
So since then I've leaned into it. I, 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 I was like, oh, you like this? Because I've been doing this on my own for years and you know, I've just been enjoying this. So, okay, if you like it, I can make more. And so I made a little EP um, and put that out and people really ate it up. And so now I was like, okay, I guess, all right, let's go, let's go for it. And so that's what I'm doing now. I'm really throwing myself into it and uh, being well received. Okay, so that means you're you're doing like a combo. So you're doing you're, you're doing your opera, but then you're also writing, you know, get, getting your other content out there to to kind of grow your your hip hop or brand. So, what does that look like for you right now? Like, what what are you trying to do with that? Uh, wow. Well, so yeah, I am still doing opera. I am still doing the traditional operas whenever I can. I don't know that I'll ever leave that. Um, however, now that I can kind of unfurl my operatic hip hop wings. <laughs> Um, I've, so I'm doing a number of things. I've, um, so I've created a brand that I call hip opera and it's, so it's also a genre of music, uh, the mix of opera and hip hop, you know, that's pretty simple to explain, but it's also, um, one of the things that opera and hip hop have, um, in common is that it's thrived in the I would, I would say the lower ends of society. Like so, some of our most popular, most exciting, overdone operas today, uh, Mary Figaro, uh, Cozy Fantute, The Barber of Seville, were, um, were kind of like done in like not the high end fancy places. That was like the grungy, dirty, low class, like, you know, daughter snuck out of the house to like go to those shows mm -hmm. kind of places. Mm -hmm. And hip hop was the same stuff. But because they became so popular, they eventually were elevated. And so with hip hop, I'm doing the same thing, kind of real in between what is considered classy and classless and, cause I, uh, and, and allowing them to play together. Because I feel like for a lot of us uh, people, especially a lot of my generation, We've kind of been in this, because of like things that's happened with the economy, we've kind of been in this limbo of wanting nice things, but being really comfortable with not really fancy things and letting them both play together. Like, you know, a hot cheetah, like washing down our caviar with wild cherry Pepsi kind of thing. Like that's 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 kind of who we are. And so that's uh, that's kind of the brand I, uh, I'm playing with. So I tell I tell a lot of operatic stories, but I tell it like a regular person and uh, I make opera digestible in that way. And yeah. it's not so much with a need to like make opera accessible. It's more of just allowing it to be what it is and letting whoever wants to come to it, come to it. And and, and the, the best parts about it, it's all, even the music, the, the performances, they're all great stories and that's what people like. So if you, I don't want to say strip away the fanciness, but if you highlight the grunge, if you will, of it, um, you know, everyone wants to hear those stories. Everyone wants to hear those songs. Everyone wants to, to see those shows, to take it in and, and be a part of that. And so a lot of what my, my brand does is kind of, give people permission to enjoy the classy and the classless, whatever that means for you. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you mentioned something. Um, I, I think yeah. you do a great job at, at educating um, some of the, the operas and actually being able to tell the story in a way uh, that that normal people can understand, you know, like myself. Um, so, you know, I, I think we maybe we should get just a quick summary. You, like you, you mentioned one opera where a dude had a weird flex where, you know, they act like they go away and, you know, the, then the ladies are left. So you want to tell me a little bit about that, that story really quick? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, was one of, that was one of the first operas because, you know, I came to opera late in life and uh, and I saw the opera and I, I heard the show, I was like, this sounds like some stuff that people would do today. I mean, a little exaggerated, but it sounds like the same kind of story. So what happened in this story was like, these two, like it starts out with these two guys, or well, three guys in the cafe. It's these two young guys and an older guy nearby. And the young guys are like, you know what, my girl is more faithful than your girl. And the little guy's like, no, 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 my girl is the most faithful. And that's like, and yeah, that's a weird flex. It's just like, who sits around bragging about how faithful their girls are like, 
Why are you just asking for trouble? So here comes trouble. The other dude, he's like, oh, really? No, nah, you guys are just young. Women are women, they all cheat. And it's like, I'll fight you right now. Like, dude, you don't even know what you're talking about. My woman is like a phoenix of faithfulness. Like, it, it, she can't be touched or whatever. And dude's like, all right, bet. This amount of money says, you do everything I tell you to do for 24 hours, your girls will cheat on you. And these fools go like, bet, all right, cool. And so they go through and the dude puts together this elaborate situation. And I, I don't want to like go through the whole thing and give any spoilers, yeah. but I was like watching this. I was like, okay, yeah, this is lit. I, I, this, this, these are great stories, they're funny. Like, I mean, I don't know if you remember the rest of the story, but if you don't, you want to know what happened after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll point back to that. <laughs> um, I guess uh, so. You've you've got this pretty awesome brand coming up. You 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 have some amazing content coming out on top of that. But you know, on top of that, there's there's you know, you seem to like coffee, and you know that's kind of what we're about. So uh, tell me about you know the coffees that that you like. Uh, you know, when, whenever you go out, you know what's your go tos, and you know what 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 are you thinking, or what are you usually doing when you're when you're drinking the coffee. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I used to just be whatever about coffee until I went up to work in San Jose. I was in the Bay Area for about seven months and then I learned, okay, there, there's like coffee, like there, not all coffees are equal. Um, so I don't want to say I've become a coffee snob, uh, <laughs> but I do, I know that if I ever get the chance to have Ethiopian, it has to be Ethiopian. Um, and I, I, and past that, I'm pretty simple. Oh well, no, that's not true. Because it, <laughs> I was gonna say, because I just, I just want a latte. Just give me a latte. But it has to be with oat milk. And being completely honest, if if oat milk at this point, if you don't have oat milk available, I'm not interested in, in the coffee. I'll probably do an americano. Um, still with the Uh Yeah. And so, and. And I put a I, I put a decent amount of sugar in there too. Okay. Well, everybody likes it their way. You know, yeah. we don't judge. We, you know, we. But I, I'm also one for a latte. So, uh, in fact, uh, it, it's usually I want it. I want it black. I'll do like an americano and then pour some uh, cold brew into it so that I can drink it immediately. Nice. Uh, that's that. That's my my breakfast. And then and then I like to have a latte and I'll usually use whole or or oat. So I like both of those. Not a big yeah. fan of almond or coconut or any of the other ones. So. There's a little um, season I used to put the heavy whipping cream into my coffee and sort of, and that was, that's almost more of a confection to me because I still put a decent amount of sugar, but then, <laughs> then it's barely still coffee. Yeah. Well, um, so, you know, outside of, you know, a, a future uh, collaboration that, that may be in store uh, with, you know, some some coffee, some Forte Legato and, and some Baba Tunde, um, like, is there anything out there that you feel like, you know, those who are, you know, Forte Legato coffee lovers or those who might be walking into the store or, or even, you know, your own people, anything you want them to know um, about you or anything that's coming up in the near future? Um, well, I'm, so next year, everything going according to the plan, uh, pandemic has kind of thrown things into a loop. Uh, I'll have my first full album complete and it's, it's going to be, going to be a doozy. I think it's going to shake things up a little bit because it is going to be a very, very balanced work of opera and hip hop. And, uh, and I think it's going to be good because I think it's been attempted a number of times, but it's never been really good. And I think, uh, yeah, this this is this is going to be that. Well, that's, that's great. Well, um, thank you for your time. Y'all watching, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna really enjoy some some of the upcoming stuff. Uh, and then of course, uh, we'll have a series of links uh, pointing to some of uh, Tune Day's things, uh, including um, the song that he first mentioned, and then um, some of his descriptions of, of uh, certain operas that, that he's recorded. Great content, uh, phenomenal person. Okay. Baba Tune Day, thank you so much for, for joining in. Um, really appreciate the time. Uh, especially the, the time we got together to eat some of that wonderful Mexican food uh, out, out in your area. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing your future content and, and everything that you're doing. And uh, if, if you uh, need anything, you know, you know where we are and we'll, we'll always have some coffee away. way.